My name is Philip Nilati. We are coming to you live from our studios at number five, Ola Hansen Link, Tesano, Accra. Coming up. Parliamentary Committee Chairman slams previous government's power purchase agreement as detrimental to energy sector. Excess generation capacity contracted undertake of pay, PPAs, cost the government 320 million in capacity charges estimated to increase to 620 million annually with the addition of new plans in 2019. Deputy Minister of Local Government expresses displeasure over Ayawaso Municipal Assembly's misuse of funds for flooding issues. Part of the program is to ensure that the money is put to good use and so we don't have seen, I'll make a report to the minister, we must begin to relook at the priority in terms of where we apply the money and make sure that we are getting value for money and that we are making the necessary impact on human lives and, 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 and settlement. Chakotai team arrests 12 suspected illegal medicine and aphrodisiac peddlers at Kwame Nkrumah Circle here in Accra. These peddlers, they have uh, plastic transparent plastics and then there are medicines in them they sell to the general public the other one is at one of the stations where people sell aphrodisiacs to the drivers and other unsuspecting people and later on Sienna extra upper east region aims for 70 percent anthrax vaccination coverage before lifting animal consumption ban the Muslim celebration also and uh, that is why we are working very hard. For now, we are trying to meet the target so that if we are able to do the 70% within the 14 days, then uh, hopefully we should be able to leave the ban for Muslims to be able to get their own lives and to do their sacrifices. Once again, you welcome to CNR Extra here on City TV. We are live, and you can join us with your thoughts, submissions, and comments via WhatsApp line 0204447033. We are also streaming live on YouTube, where you can join us there on City TV. Me, Latte Latte, welcome to the show. How are you doing, my brother? I'm well, Philip. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Let's bring you the very first story. And the Parliamentary Committee Chairman, that is on energy and mines has slammed the previous government's power purchase agreement as detrimental to the energy sector. The Chairman of the Mines and Energy Committee of Parliament, Samuel Atacha, has strongly criticized the power purchase agreement signed by the previous John Mahama-led government, now describing them as highly unfavorable and detrimental. Now, the lawmaker says the former administration entered into 43 take-or-pay power Patients agreements resulting in the current crisis bedeviling the energy sector. The chairman of the Mines and Energy Committee of Parliament, Samuel Atachia, on Wednesday addressed the media on some power purchase agreements signed by the Mahama government. He says that the Mahama administration signed about 43 take or pay power purchase agreements, which has compelled the government to pay over $300 million in the year 2018 for these contracts. He says that although the current government has cancelled about 11 of these contracts, they are still having an effect on the energy sector. In 2018, excess generation capacity contracted undertake or pay, PPAs, cost the government 320 million in capacity charges estimated to increase to 620 million annually with the addition of new plans in 2019 these unused supply charges are one of the most significant sources of financial strain on the sector i beg to repeat this these unused 
supply charges are one of the most significant sources of financial strain on the sector. Cumulative net sector debt was 2.7 billion in 2018 with 30% payable to the private sector. This sum is equivalent to 33% of the government's 2018 tax revenue, highlighting the scale of the financial burden. And it continues like that. The government was forced to issue two series of bonds totaling 1.6 billion in 2017 and 2018 to pay 50% of the legacy debt owed to several energy sector actors, including various banks, VRA, ECG, the Northern um, Electricity Distribution Company, unresolved, and the sector's total shortfalls are projected to accumulate to 12.5 billion by 2023. So ladies and gentlemen, these are not inventions of um, a political party. These are raw data. He added that the Minister of Energy would be summoned to appear before the Mines and Energy Committee to answer questions on why the government could not provide some of the excess power to other neighboring countries in need of it to rake in foreign exchange. I was also contemplating, first of all, are we not able to um, export the excess capacity to neighboring countries that will rake in foreign exchange? That is a matter that um, I'm not here to um, second guess the minister, that the committee is going to, if you like, hold the minister before it to question about if we have excess capacity, why is it not? That will make, if you like, satisfactory arrangements with neighboring countries who might be in dire need of power. So we rake in foreign industry. So I thank you for confirming my thinking because whatever it is, the committee will bring the minister to talk about it. Now, if you have excess capacity, why don't you ensure that every uh, nook and cranny of this nation should have power? Well, my brother, I'm telling you something which will shock you. The ECG could have done that, but the recovery levels of revenue is abysmal. I have to tell you the truth. You see, because you cannot do your best, even if the little you are running is going through a lot of challenges. We are told about institutions that owe to their neck in terms of um, uh, payment of electricity bills. During the approval of the 2023 Get Fund allocation, it was also revealed that over 700 million Ghana cities had been allocated for the digitalization and learning systems in senior high schools and TVs, and this include the provision of tablets to students of senior high schools and TVs. Members expressed the need for government to present to this house a policy on government distribution of laptops to be used as a way to replace textbooks. The speaker, this is particularly important because members will need to at least apprise ourselves with government drive as to the replacement of the laptops. Most particularly, that there is not every school that will have access to electricity. And what exactly is government trying to do to pushing those areas as well. Mr. Speaker, we were told that that laptops will cost approximately 1.5 billion cities. And now the formula is allocating 740 million Ghana cities. Uh, 700 and 750 million Ghana cities. I thought I saw some 40. 750, it's 740 million Ghana cities. Mr. Speaker, that is what we have here. Special SHS TVET digitization innovation programs, 740 million Ghana cities. That is what has been allocated here. Speaker, my agreement is, as, at the Committee of the Whole, my agreement is for us to ring fence it, whilst we ensure that government present to us a policy on this matter. Reporting from Parliament, my name is Ni Ayukwe Okain.
for City News. So after the chairman of the Mines and Energy Committee will address the press, there have been reactions on this particular issue that is the power purchase agreement for which the um, former deputy power minister, that is John Jinapo, dismissed the claims that the ex former Muhammad administration uh, signed power agreement that has cost the country over $320 million, amongst other comments that have been made. Before that, when the issue also came out, there was a reaction from uh, ben Boache, who also spoke about it extensively. But what do you make about this particular issue briefly? No, well, Philip, interesting how some 67 years ago, Ghana was struggling with, with you know, so. with doom so yeah. power supply. But uh, years down the lane, we are getting to uh, see that well, we have excess that we are not even able to use in our daily activities and even for industrial purposes. So you'll be wondering why some of these things at this time well you may want to say that perhaps a, the increment in you know utility tariffs has actually affected the usage of electricity some people may not be using and also uh, slow economic growth among other mm. things so uh, as expected we are not getting to see the real usage of electricity given the fact that uh, previous administrations have you know signed deals that have led us to what we are seeing now and for me, energy is one critical aspect of economic growth. And for us as Ghanaians, you realize that without energy, we cannot do it. But this conversation we are having, actually, one we want to see the political, you know, dynamics of this whole uh, conversation is what actually baffles me. Are we not saying that, well, there has been a strong push for government to actually renegotiate, you know, or take or pay power arrangement mm -hmm. to you know, take and pay because of the situation we are finding ourselves in. The argument largely has been the fact that our resources are scarce and then we are pumping money into, you know, electricity that we are not using. So me, I would expect, you know, the two sides of, you know, the house, the majority, the minority, and even on a national level, both the NPP and NDC, to find, you know, a nationalistic approach to dealing with some of these things because, look, if you look at the conversation clearly, you realize that monies are being spent on, you know, resources that we are not using. And I, I, I like the fact that you made reference to, you know, Ben Boachi also yeah. say, he says, it's a, the blame game, whether this person has done that well is not what is needed. That, that is not what is mm. needed. Are we able to say that, look, we should go back to the drawing table, look at the agreement that we've signed the take or pay is not helping us. Are we able to look at, you know, take and pay and then see how we are able to deal with some of these things? Mind you, independent power producers are always asking governments for their monies. Yet, we are in the paying excess capacity charge. Years ago, we were made to understand that on an annual basis, we are, being pay, we are paying between $500 million and $800 million every year because of the excess capacity that we are having on our hand. And so for me, you want to say that because of political or electoral <laughs> pressures, that's why, you know, the two sides wants to, you know, have that particular conversation on to who to, uh, to, to, to put the blame yeah. on. Mind you, the country director for World Bank, he actually reignited this whole conversation when he actually made the fact that our economic difficulties as a, as a, is also partly to blame or as a result of, you know, some of these contracts that we've signed in the past. And if you listen to someone uh, at that chair very well, he admits that there is excess capacity, but he's also making the point that are we able to, you know, send to other countries, sell in exchange of foreign, you know, uh, uh, foreign exchange. Mm -hmm. And so if they know that this is one of the viable options they could consider, why not consider it? Other than holding press conferences, telling us that NDC is to blame, MPP, MPP is, saying is that you are, we, are, we, are, we have managed the issue much better than you did. I mean... These monies that we are watching them go down the drain for excess uh, uh, capacity that we are not using, it's to our own disadvantage. And look at the difficulty we are facing now. And this particular issue is also, if you connect the dots, you realize that the increase in utility tariffs is also to, to blame for it. And you, mind you, for, this for, for, IMF... For the chairman on the Mines on Energy Committee, mm -hmm. uh, he said that the... Uh, Energy Minister will be put before the committee or be heard before the committee 
to answer questions why we can't export the excess capacity mm -hmm. to rake in the income that we need. So I think that we're going to follow that clearly yeah. and see how that is going to unfold. Uh, exactly so, Philip. So we are just looking forward for some energy sector reforms to ensure that we are able to make the best out of you know the limited resources we have as a country. Mm. And then also ensure that we have stable power supply energy to drive you know industrialization. Because if industrialization is advancing, then we can also witness some form of, you know, economic growth. Mm -hmm. If individual households can also, you know, be assured of constant power supply and all that. I mean, economic activities will be boosted and then we'll be able to put some of these things behind us. Well, let's still stay on the floor of parliament, but not on energy. Let's go to politics, where the Speaker of Parliament has predicted that the 2024 elections will be between... John Dramani Mahama of the NDC and also the Vice President Dr. Mahoud, Mahmoud Baumia of the NPP. Speaker of Parliament, Right Honorable Kingsford Alban Sumana Bagbin, because he has predicted that the 2024 elections will be between John Mahama of the NDC and Vice President Dr. Baumia of the MPP. Now, the Speaker of Parliament said it will be the first time in the history of the Fourth Republic that the two major parties in Ghana will have candidates from the north of the country leading them. Mr. Bagbin made the prediction when he paid a courtesy call on the overlord of Gonja. We have more on this report. This is the time that the two main parties in Ghana, the new patriotic party, MPP, and the national Democratic Congress, NDC, are both deciding that their flag bearers will be our sons from the north. So in the next election, either it's His Excellency John Romani Mahama or it's His Excellency Mohamudu Mahumia. What is the difference? They are both our sons. Now you want to fight and say this is our time. What I plead with all of you is for us to accept, as I stated earlier on, our differences, accept that it's natural. And let's see how we can come together to prepare ourselves to receive the development that is coming our way. So legacy projects, we will do. Be prepared that when we bring the legacy projects, you will be able to keep them, multiply them, and make sure that generations yet unborn will benefit from our sweat. So that is a prediction from the speaker, but the NPP is yet to hold its primaries, that is the parliamentary and the presidential. We, we are looking <laughs> forward to who becomes the flag bearer of the party. But I think that I get the speaker's point, where it has to do with development in the northern part of the country. Uh, that has, uh, in most parts of the, that part of the country, most communities really do not have much development in there. But if this is the issue, that we are having two individuals from the northern part of the country uh, moving forward uh, or being at the forefront of these two big political parties for the 2024 elections, then that means there is no excuse that development must uh, go on well in these a part of the uh, country that is the northern belt. Interesting prediction by number three, yes. uh, coming from number three. Uh, but by and large, you realize that even before this particular prediction mm. or even this particular, uh, you know, combination that is likely to occur, you realize that previously when political parties are actually fielding candidates, usually is the the southern part mm. and then you know the northern part this time around the tables have turned so we are having the four runners coming from uh, the northern part of the country mm. if Baumia is elected mm. at the end of the primaries that will be held by the npp and so for 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 me the predictions have been that well the npp race is actually going to be between Baumia and alan mm -hmm. so i i just want to be measured in my commentary and then wait till we see who the npp will be filled in because we know uh, the NDC has actually selected John Domani Mahama already, and so he's in a comfortable lead, mm -hmm. quote on unquote, for their party. And so we will see what will happen in the coming days. And I'm also tempted to believe that even aside from the kind of candidates that you know the various political parties will put forward in their election, the party itself, that's the NPP and the NDC, going into the election, a number of factors will account for you know 
uh, their fortunes. And for me, I'm just looking forward to the Asin North by election, mm -hmm. which I believe is a precursor to, you know, whatever the 2024 happens. general elections. Mind you, whatever happens at Asin North will be a true or bigger reflection. Are you sure? A true or bigger reflection. Why do you say that? A true or bigger reflection of, you know, what is going to happen at the polls in 2024 because mm -hmm. well we have a government that is sitting saying that is going to break the eight mm -hmm. and also we have a an opposition party mm -hmm. waiting saying that because of you know the poor governance of the sitting government the time has come for them so mind you by elections are critical component of national elections mm -hmm. and so the parties must take advantage of this particular but why are seen no because even with that, we had a by election in Kumewu. Kumewu, Kumewu, yes. Kumewu, 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 and to recently, they were they were not enjoying mm -hmm. developmental project, but for the by election, yeah, okay. so it depends on how the message goes on 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 the ground. And so you saw party big wigs mm -hmm. going to Kumewu. Similar thing is going to happen in 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 a in a And so the conversation really on the ground should be why the NPP must still stay in power. Or why the NDC must must, take, uh, must must recapture the seat from the governing NPP, and so for Baumia and Mahama, if that happens, it's actually going to be you know a very. But you see, the focus way. here is mm. about development in the northern part of the country, and number three is asking that at all costs, if these two individuals come on board and they are leading the two big political parties. We should have enough development in, in, in the northern part of the country because we've seen reports mm -hmm. of deplorable roads, schools in bad shape, um, some communities not having portable water, uh, amongst other health care, and a lot of issues in the northern part of the country. Isn't it the time for these issues to be addressed? If solely we have, or definitely we have these two individuals leading the uh, two big political parties. But we should also not make it look as if, if a particular person is not coming from your region mm -hmm. or whatever. No, development can de happen. Development can happen because government actually is a continuum. Everyone has to get its fair share of, you know, the national kick. Mm -hmm. And so if we narrow down the conversation to, you know, development in the north, that's exactly why, you know, most of the political parties will always want to get their, their vice presidential candidate from the northern parts yeah. of the country. It's the same conversation that we will have. That well, if you have a vice presidential candidate from the northern region, is going to spare growth, is going to spare development, and all that. Granted, they may have you know the bigger responsibility of ensuring that they push some of these developmental projects from wherever they hail from, but not to the detriment of you know other regions or other sectors of the economy. And so, it's a broader conversation that we can have, other than limiting it to you know mm -hmm. where one hails from. Well, you get votes from those places, but in terms of development, can we have a broader picture? to ensure that everybody is, 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 is saved. So after the presidential primaries of the new patriotic party, the NPP, the governing uh, NPP, we will know whether the prediction of the Speaker of Parliament will come to pass or not. You are still listening or rather watching CNR Extra here on CTTV still to come. Deputy Minister of Local Government expresses displeasure over Ayawaso Municipal Assembly's misuse of funds for flooding issues. And let's stay with us, we're back with more stories. Competition. From the shores to the pools to the beaches across the land, if you fancy yourself a competitive swimmer, this is for you. The City TV National Swimming Championships is happening on the 15th and 16th of July 2023 at the Trust Sports Emporium. To register, WhatsApp your name, age, and contact details to 0558 or call 0205 973 973. 
The City TV National Swimming Championships is brought to you by City TV with support from 97.3 City FM and the Ghana Swimming Association. Thanks for staying with us here on CNR Extra. Let's bring you some more stories. And the Deputy Minister for Local Government, he has expressed displeasure over Ayawaso Municipal Assembly's misuse of funds for flooding issues. The Deputy Minister of Local Government, Decentralization and Rural Development, Martin Kweku Ajay Mensa Kosa, has expressed dissatisfaction with the Ayawaso Central and Ayawaso North Municipal Assemblies for their inadequate utilization of funds allocated to them for addressing recurrent flooding issues. Now, Martin Ajay Mensa Kosa made this observation during a working vis visit to various metropolitan and municipal assemblies benefiting from the Greater Accra Resilient and Integrated Development Garret Project. Now, the purpose of the visit was to assess the progress of desilting works and local drains in these assemblies. Here's a report filed by City News' Rachel Engman, read by Eno Safo. The Ministry of Local Government is currently undertaking a five-day inspection tour of metropolitan and municipal assemblies involved in the Great Accra Resilient and Integrated Development Project. The objective is to evaluate the ongoing desilting works and community engagement in the respective assemblies. On the third day of the tour, the team, led by Deputy Minister Martin Kwekweje Menta Kosa, visited the Ayawasa Central, Ayawasa North, Ayawasa East, and Ayawasa West municipalities. The tour, which commenced on Monday, June 12, is scheduled to conclude on Friday, June 16, 2023. The minister disclosed that the ministry has disbursed a total of $1,300,000 out of the allocated $3,000,000. $250,000 to the 17 Garrett Project Beneficiary Assemblies for desilting local drains and other drainage improvement works. However, he expressed concern that the significant investments made by the government in flood control programs are being undermined by the inappropriate behavior of some Accra residents who construct buildings in waterways and engage in indiscriminate dumping of solid waste, which ends up clogging drains in the city. He specifically called for the immediate demolition of illegal structures at the tributary of the Odor River in Soba Down, a suburb of Westlands in the Ayawasa West municipality. Not too long ago, I taught some parts of Ghana to have a look at uh, lands that have been encroached upon by people which belong to government and which are needed to build schools and other, other, other uh, you know, um, settlements. But you go and people with impunity just build. That's what I'm seeing here, indiscriminate siting of, 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 of buildings into the buffer zone. And so we expect them to move to reclaim. It's important we protect lives. And so my word to everybody is that in this place, I expect the assembly, the planners should get to work and then break some of the walls, okay, to make way for the water. The gutter is even closing up. Sorry, the, uh, the drain is closing up. And I, uh, I, I dare say, come tomorrow, they may close it up to build. And so we must evoke the full powers of the assembly, uh, push us back, and make sure that the, the, the right of course of the water is maintained to ensure that human lives are safe and then uh, we don't think, um, record any disaster. Martin Ej Mensa Corsa shared his observations with the media on Wednesday after the working visit to the four Ayawaso Municipal Assemblies. He expressed his disappointment with the performance of the Ayawaso Central and Ayawaso North Municipal Assemblies despite receiving 420,000 Ghana cities each for their work. We've been to Ayawaso Central, we've gone to uh, Ayawaso East, we've gone to uh, the North, 
and here is the West, which concludes our activities for today. My general impression is that if you compare this, which is Ayawasu West, to that of East, you see real work, practical work that has been done in terms of dredging or desilting the gutters. The two earlier assemblies, I'm not impressed. I mean, I think that they could have found a better priority to make the impact felt so that, you know, we know uh, we are solving a problem. I mean, if you take me to areas such as what we saw, compared to what I'm seeing here, there is a better impact on this on people's lives than the earlier places. Uh, part of the program is to ensure that the money is put to good use. And so with what I've seen, I'll make a report to the minister. We must begin to really look at the priority in terms of where we apply the money and make sure that we're getting value for money and that we're making the necessary impact on human lives and, 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 and settlements. And Some municipal chief executives also shared their views with the media. Performance is uh, about, uh, if I can say, it's a uh, 60 70 percent performance and uh, we started not today and we have a, a vast area of strength to work on so as we are doing any mileage or even thousand start with one mile so as we've seen they started and it's not today that we started. The other side is about two, three weeks now. We started very early. We didn't wait. The moment we saw, at least we have to comply with our directive from the minister. So we comply. You know, we live in a zone community. And you know the consequences. So it's, it's a recurrent affairs. We will continue to do it. It's not a one day affair here. It's something before even the directive. It's something we have been doing. We are used to what? Cleaning uh, uh, of what? Uh, drinks. We've done some dredge work here around the GBC. As you saw, we are almost complete. Almost 75% of the work has been done. We are left with just some uh, collection of the, the after the dissolved, the, the dredging. And then we chose three areas that is Kanda Highway. We are doing some dissolving. Now, one is almost 70% done. And then um, a different area at Nima, that's we call Nima Downside. We are going to clean the place there. And then uh, the ring road side, we have one ring we're supposed to start. So at least it's good that uh, the Deputy Minister for Local Government is monitoring what the funds are being used for, whether they are being used judiciously or not. He cited some examples of what Ayawasu West war gone. I think Ayawasu West is doing well. That is in terms of the dredging of the drains. But my worry is, if you dredge or you do the desilting, how well is it being monitored? Because we still have issues of the dumping of waste indiscriminately by people around or issue of people not really going about what is expected of them when it comes to ensuring that the drains are kept properly to uh, prevent any flood from, from happening. But I think the monitoring is a, it's a step in the right direction. Mm. It's a difficult one to comprehend, Philip. It, it, the monitoring you see is a step in the right direction. But if you monitor and you realize that there are loopholes in the monitoring, mm. evaluation, and all that, and you just come out to lament and express the satisfaction or the Well, he said, he, he, he's doing and, the lamenting and, and, and saying all that so that he... Various assemblies no, can, I mean, can do the work. I mean, but mind the you, there are 17 assemblies that have been given these funds to do what is needful when it comes to uh, dredging of drains and ensuring that flooding situation there is kept. Hmm. But I think the ministry has, you know, the bigger or larger oversight responsibility in ensuring that the funds that are committed to some of these things are actually put into good use. Mind you, just last month, the World Bank actually gave Ghana 150 million mm -hmm. US dollars to, you know, tackle flooding as part of, you know, this Garrett project. And the minister, the deputy minister has actually said that each of these uh, assemblies were actually giving 420 million Ghana cities to ensure, 420,000 mm -hmm. Ghana cities to ensure that they are able to, you know, desilt drains and also dread them and to tackle flooding. But if you are saying that some assemblies have been able to do a yeoman's job, others have failed in ensuring that they did what the money was expected to be, to be used for, I mean, you must call them to order. Find out from them what actually 
happened? What mm -hmm. are their challenges? Are, are there things that are, you know, frothing the whole process and all that? Because, look, this flooding situation in, in, in the capital is one topical issue we keep talking about as, you know, journalists, as mm -hmm. media houses covering it every now and then. And as you may be aware, we're already in the rainy season. And some of these things are, you know, much likely to be expected. Any funds are allocated to assemblies to ensure that some of these things are handled more properly and they are not doing it. I mean, <laughs> some actions must be taken. I guess oh, you, you saw so the those, MCU those, for those, Ayawasu those, Central. Those, it says that they've been doing it. Ayawasu East also noted that they've been doing it. North too noted that they've been doing it as well. It says that yeah. I think that the monitoring should go down well he, and also to ensure that the right thing has been done. Exactly. Everything boils down to leadership. Mm. That, that is what I'll always be saying. Oh, away from this story, let's bring you uh, what the Chapatai team has done concerning an arrest that is affected. Uh, they've arrested 12 suspected illegal uh, medicine and aphrodisiac peddlers here in Accra at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle. A tripita team led by the Pharmacy Council with support from the Ghana Police Service and the Foods and Drugs Authority, FDA, has apprehended 12 individuals suspected to be involved in the illegal sale of unlicensed medicines and aphrodisiacs. Now, the arrest took place at various locations in the Kwame Nkrumah Circle area of the national capital. City News' Daniel Drew provides more details in this report read by Emmanuel Opong. Following City News' special report on the activities of unlicensed medical retailers commonly known as drug peddlers conducted on April 29, 2023, the Pharmacy Council took decisive action by carrying out arrests at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle Interchange. Prior to this operation, the Pharmacy Council had cautioned pharmaceutical product wholesalers and licensed medical retailers against engaging with illegal peddlers. On Wednesday, a tripartite team consisting of the Pharmacy Council, the Ghana Police Service and the FDA apprehended 12 suspects involved in the sale of illegal medicines and aphrodisiacs. The team strategized at the council before proceeding to the VIP station at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle Interchange to carry out the operation. Acting as buyers, the team made purchases from the peddlers and then apprehended them. While some of the peddlers managed to flee, leaving their wares behind, others were caught in the act. One of the peddlers attempted to escape but was ultimately apprehended. The arrested suspect have been identified as Philemon, Nado, Sarah Ofori, Henry J. Lindo Drew, Kwame Frempon, Godfred Kabuja, Janet Adum, Mary Boafo, Ijiri Padaspai, Sarah Boafo, Betty Nkuma, and Nanesi. Several of them were interviewed by City News. Uh, won't answer so far me me dry boys no moton tramadon no and no pet any sa a drone boys no more days in no and no I <laughs> How many times in na uh, we say a police for aba say omo wa be sesa mo nema? But yo tan bi on be be bi ai bo na me ni ha na mo. Aya me ko ko hwe me ma no. William Rutman, Head of Intelligence Gathering and Enforcement at the Pharmacy Council, stated that the arrested suspect will face prosecution. A few months ago, I granted an interview 
to City FM or City TV and other, the other media stations. I promise them that drug peddlers will be arrested and prosecuted. So today, we are just fulfilling the promise that we made on that day. Um, we went to circle, Prime Nkuma circle, uh, specifically VIP, where we have these peddlers. They have uh, plastic, transparent plastics, and then there are medicines in them they sell to the general public. The other one is at one of the stations where people sell aphrodisiacs to the drivers and other unsuspecting people. Today, we have teamed up with the police, the FGA, and we have arrested most of them. We are taking them, we've taken some inventory, we are taking them to the Greater Accra Regional Police Command. Their statements will be taken and then we will follow up. The question is who buys these drugs and also do you think that this exercise can uh, curb it entirely? You were saying something <laughs> that you think that it should be stopped from source and that this activity and you can tell from the interview that uh, these peddlers did with uh, Odru. They are saying that, well, they don't know that it's against maybe the laws of the land to engage in these kind of trades. But for unemployment reasons, they are doing it for survival. What do you make of this? Well, I think as a country, we have a lot of laws just that we don't enforce them. And from the little I, I know, I am very much sure that you're also aware that even if you want to operate a mm. pharmacy shop or a drugstore, as you want to put yeah. it, you just don't go in for any structure and go and put medicines there because these are lives that we are talking about. But for us to see the influx of you know these peddlers on the streets, and this is circle, I've seen them on a number of occasions. Exactly. And for me, I'm thinking that the Pharmacy Council and the you know, Food and Drugs Authority will try to address this particular issue and the source. The source here being the wholesalers of these. Or wherever you know, they get these Where these from. guys, I've actually engaged one of them personally because mm. I was also wondering. And as a matter of fact, I thought it was a major cause of concerns. Mm -hmm. And then he actually points to me where they go in for these uh, you know, drugs. And it's a popular place here in Accra. And I'm sure if the pharmacy council and the FDA goes uh, go to those places, they will be able to you know track some of uh, these persons and then ensure that these things do not get onto the market. But if those people supplying these peddlers are let off the hook, and if we go after these you know peddlers, I don't think it's an exercise that is worth you know sustaining mm. because these drug peddlers and not e only them even the ones that we have in church trolls the van peddling, yeah, uh, peddling yeah, and yeah. all that the people who you come and stand in the church in, you know, public and, transport and, and, and start with the are, preaching yes, before and then they, they end sell up all manner of things to people mm. i mean how are we able to streamline you know proper dispensing of you know drugs in in the country especially at the community level because mind you these people we find who find themselves in you know areas like circle how do you see them you know walk to a front so if you are able to stop the distribution from the wholesale it will not get to these retailers as i want to put them and then other people will go and buy because you just meet them you tell them i want para i want this i want this and they sell all manner of you know illegal and illicit ones of course those that have not been even approved to be on the market, they are there selling them. And it's a major source of worry to you mm. know, our health system as yeah. a country. Because when you people can take in some of these unlicensed drugs, there will be after effects and also have a drain on you know, their pocket, the whole health system. And we know the kind of health system that we operate here in, 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 the, in the country, how porous it is sometimes. And so for me, I'm just urging you know, the... Pharmacy the, council, the stakeholders yeah. here, the relevant stakeholders to here. To go beyond this. To go beyond, you know, chasing these peddlers. I think they should get to the wholesalers. If somebody comes in there to buy a drug, does the person have the requisite, you know, documents mm. for you to sell to that person? If the person doesn't, you don't sell to that person. Even in pharmacy shops, there are some properly you know manage pharmaceutical shops that no, when you go you don't, for prescription. you don't have prescriptions mm, before you they will not the even provide you with the with the medication so how are we able to leave you know this wholesalers 
to give these drugs to these people and they are working all over you are not even sure of the safety of you know the medicine the storage the efficacy mm -hmm. and all that so i mean the, the the collaboration should be broadening the exercise should be you know taking a step further so that all the people in the quote unquote supply value chain in this illegal business are you know made to face the, the, the appropriate well, sanctions. but the pharmacy council or the tripartite uh, team is doing a good job but i think that as individuals we should also be very careful of what we consume when it comes to these drugs and know what you are buying and also the side effect you are still watching cnr extra here on city tv still to come upper east region aims at 70 percent anthrax vaccination coverage before lifting animal consumption ban And let's stay with us with Africa more stars. kid that collects stray A's in your sleep, a brainy brain that aces quizzes without even trying, or a clever clogs that knows just about everything, then there's one or more battle you have to win. The Literacy Challenge, the nationwide search for the best junior high student is on. Think it could be you going home with 10,000 Ghana cities and a glitzy trophy? Then, in not less than 600 words, write a story that ends with the following statement. The happiest people do not have the best of everything. They make the best of everything they have. Stories should be written in your own handwriting with the deadline of Saturday, the 15th of July, 2023 in mind. Submissions must include an endorsement by a parent or guardian and their full contact details. And once you're done, Shoot off your entries to the front desk of City TV or City FM. Or you can send entries to P.O. Box GP 14123 Accra Central. For more inquiries, call 0558-973-973. The Literacy Challenge 2023 is powered by City TV, supported by City FM, and is sponsored by the Ghana National Gas Company and Ribby Crunchy Biscuits by M4 Foods. Welcome back. Let's bring you some more stories. An inflation in Ghana witnessed a slight uptick rising from 41.2% in April to 42.2% in May. Let's bring you that insight. Inflation in Ghana witnessed a slight uptick rising from 41.2% in April 2023 to 42.2%. In May 2023. Now, this increase follows a consistent decline in inflation over the previous four months. Now, according to data released by the Ghana Statistical Service, Professor Samuel Kobuna Enim, the government statistician, highlighted that the primary drivers of inflation were food and non alcoholic beverages, accounting for 52.4% followed by housing, water, electricity, gas, and other fuels at 13.1%, and transportation at 9.2%. A report from City News' Bureau Chief for the Middle Belt, Edward Opal Marfo, provides more details. Since the beginning of 2023, inflation has been dropping each month. But in May 2023, it has seen a marginal increase. The Ghana Statistical Service has been speaking to journalists at an engagement in Kumasi. Consumer price index stood at 178.7 relative to 125.7 that was recorded for the same time period in May 2022. 
Given these two indices, that is 178.7 for the month of May 2023 and 125.7 for the month of May 2022, the relative change in these two price indices culminates in a rate of inflation of 42.2% for the month of May 2023. 42.2% for the month of May 2023 means that between the, between the month of May 2022 and May 2023, over that one-year period, generally prices of goods and services have gone up by 42.2%. Government statistician Professor Samuel Kobna Inim has been outlining the main drivers of inflation. Food and non-alcoholic beverages, housing, water, electricity and gas and transport almost contributed three quarters to the overall inflation with food and non-alcoholic beverages contributing more than 50% to the rate of inflation that was recorded in May 2023. Specifically, food, food and non-alcoholic beverages contributed 52.4% to the overall inflation recorded in the month of May 2023. This was distantly followed by housing, water, electricity and gas that contributed 13.1% and closely followed by transport contributing 9.2% to the overall inflation that was recorded in the month of May 2023. Professor Samuel Enim has been highlighting the regional shares of inflation for May 2023. Since September 2022, the Western North region recorded the highest percentage point as it increased in September from 35.9 to 62.5%, which culminates in 26.6 percentage points for the Western North region. Contrary to four regions recording changes in excess of 20 percentage points, the Greater Accra region recorded a downward trend between September 2022 and May 2023 with a percentage point drop of 12 percent between September 2022 and May 2023. The Ghana Statistical Service has been suggesting some measures that can be taken to control inflation in the country. What we are hoping to see out of this work is an interministerial engagement where the Ministry for Food and Agric will sit with the Ministry for Transport, for instance, and say that at what point am I putting food on the market? At what point is transport contributing to prices? And this is the conversation that we expect to ensue. At the sub-national level, one of the things that we are doing at GSS, which we are open for collaboration, is a profiling of the resourcefulness of all our 261 administrative districts. If Ghana is to get a better understanding of the natural and artificial resources of our 261 administrative um, regions, it would go a long way to inform all these conversations around district assembly. So inflation from 41% to 42.2% in uh, the month of May. But the government statistician attributed the increase to a spike in food inflation during the period, which increased from 48.7% in April to 51.8% in May, which is the highest overall contribution to the national inflation rate in 17 months. Well, a lot of people were actually not expecting this, you know, marginal increase because since the beginning of the year, we've actually been recording, you know, a decline in, you know, uh, the inflation rate. And for this particular marginal increase being the first of its kind this year, uh, many people have said that it's as a result of, you know, um, some other non-inflation, uh, food inflationary factors such as, uh, you know, the electricity tariffs that were increased recently. So if you listen to uh, Dr. Patrick Esumin, for example, an economist and a finance lecturer at the University of Ghana Business School. That's what he's actually pointing to. But this morning, too, when you listen to the government statistician trying to explain further on the City Breakfast Show, largely everything hinged on, you know, the food items, yeah, food. the amount of baskets of goods, you know, individual households are buying. So it means that purchasing power is also reducing gradually. Yeah. And so that's the explanation we get. And if you look at the food items, Philip, it will interest you to know that tea and related product, fish and other seafood, cereals and cereal products, milk, other dairy products and eggs, sugar confectionery and, you know, dessert and, you know, fruit and, you know, vegetable juices. These are the top. And it's tea and related, related product, 114.8%, and also that's the highest and um, fruit and vegetable juices recording the lowest over there. There are other things such as oils and fats, live animals, meat and other parts of slaughtered land animals, water, coffee and coffee substitute, ready-made food, 
cocoa drinks, soft drinks, <laughs> vegetables, fruits. So just to mention a few. Just to mention a few <laughs> as you want to put it. But interesting to know that even from the data, the Greater Accra region is said to be, you know, the most expensive region in, in the country. Very so expensive. In the midst of, you know, these economic difficulties and global mm. disruptions, we are expecting, you know, increasing despite the relative stability of the city. Well, let's move away from this story and bring you anthrax in the Upper East region, where the Upper East region is aiming for 70% anthrax vaccination coverage before lifting animal consumption ban. working at attaining 70% anthrax vaccination coverage before lifting the indefinite ban on animal consumption in the region. Now, the committee on June 7, 2023, placed an indefinite ban on the movement, slaughtering and consumption of ruminants over an outbreak of anthrax. But speaking to City News, Upper East Regional Minister Stephen Yakubu says, although the disease has spread to 11 districts, over 21,000 ruminants have been vaccinated, adding that it is possible to lift the ban ahead of the Idal Ada. What we are doing, we are doing it not only for the region, but we are doing it for the whole, the entire country. We don't want a situation where anthrax is in the other regions, and that is why we've taken this very important precautions uh, and uh, we will do that we are also very mindful of the of the muslim celebration also and uh, that is why we are working very hard for now we are trying to meet the target so that if we're able to do the 70 percent within the 14 days then uh, hopefully we should be able to leave the ban for muslims to be able to get their animals and to do their sacrifice so we are engaging them uh, and, uh, you know, sharing everything that we have with them. And uh, I want uh, through, through this media to let them know that we are very concerned. But the most important thing also is that uh, we, should, we should be very careful uh, that uh, we don't uh, do it in such a way that this is a deadly disease. One person has already died. And therefore, if the precautions, we have to make sure we follow through it so that no one gets hurt. No one gets uh, infection, uh, so it's very, it's very, very infectious. So it is very key that we take these decisions and to make sure that we are all safe. So the vaccination drive is ongoing in the Upper East Region, which is the region where the anthrax outbreak is. I think that it shouldn't be rushed, so that the right thing should be done. Because the minister even made mention of it being a deadly disease, mm. looking at its possibility of lifting the ban ahead of the Eid. Ada, which is um, two weeks away, I think in the next uh, two weeks, Thursday, mm. I think it has to be checked very well. Well, just to add on briefly, I am expecting that uh, sensitization mm. public campaigns will go well in the region because of the 70% coverage they are yeah. looking at. And they can only achieve that if, you know, the vaccines are made available for persons. Mm -hmm. And so these campaigns will be addressing issues of, you know, vaccine hesitancy and all that. And even beyond that, improve veterinary services and extension services in the aftermath of, you know, the vaccination. And I'm sure it will be good to go. Rightly so. So uh, we hope that uh, the uh, veterinary services there will do a good job. And also the minister has stated that, well, we are looking at uh, getting some 70% vaccination drive coverage before the lifting of the animal consumption ban will be lifted. But then again, uh, we hope them all the best, or wish them all the best, rather. My name is Philip Nilati. I did this with me, Lati, Lati here on CNR Extra. Many thanks for your time, as always, and keep watching. This is gentle embrace we find solace untold i'm yours and you are mine a promise to